Today, I'm going to show you how to sign 10 or more high paying clients for your agency using Facebook ads. And if you've never used Facebook ads before, don't worry. I'm going to show you step by step how you can create a simple Facebook ad and start landing $2,000 per month or more clients just using the simple system. Over the past 10 years, I've spent over $70 million on Facebook ads alone and have used them to profitably scale multiple seven figure agencies fast. I know exactly what to do and what pitfalls to avoid, and I'm going to share all of that with you in this video. So here's what you're going to learn how to create a simple Facebook ad that'll bring in clients while you sleep. This is going to allow you to break free from the trap of manual outreach, how to write ad copy that grabs your clients by the throat and makes them want to buy by using power words that they simply can't resist. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'm going to give you our proven and profitable chat GPT Facebook ad writing template and prompt. Using this is going to allow you to write high converting Facebook ads in less than five minutes. So I hope you're excited because I've got a ton of value to share with you today. So let's dive in. All right. So the most important thing when it comes to creating Facebook ads or really any other kind of direct response marketing is a word called alignment, which I appreciate. It's a very boring sounding word, but it's going to make you a whole lot of money when you really understand how this works and you're going to be able to apply it, not just in your Facebook ads, but essentially anything else that you do in your agency with your clients, as well as all of the other campaigns that you create. So what's important here is that we're really making sure that everything is in alignment from the start all the way through to finish. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we've lined up the model. In this case, this is going to be the offer that you're promoting with your Facebook ads. You're crystal clear on exactly what it is that you're trying to accomplish and you've got it singularly focused down into that one ideal thing that you're trying to achieve. So one of the biggest mistakes people make with Facebook ads with again, most kinds of marketing is they're trying to do all of the things all at once. So promoting all of your services and showing testimonials and getting them to do this and sign up for this and sign up for this webinar and give you a call. All of that is too much. If you're offering multiple services, we have to have a talk about that another day. But for now, you do want to pick just that one thing that you really want to drive traffic to because marketing is done and won one single offer at a time. So that starts with your model. The next is the market. This is going to be your ideal client avatar, your ICA. Who is this ad for? Where are they? What are they going through? What are they like? All kinds of things that go into basic market research. You've got to make sure that you're really crystal clear on this. Now, there's the obvious things like demographic details, age, gender, income, occupation, things like that. These are actually less important from a targeting perspective, seeing as we tend to use more open targeting. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. Then we have geographic targeting. This is going to be what city, state, country, province, neighborhood, street, wherever they live. This is slightly important depending on if you're doing marketing for your own agency in order to get clients, or if you're going to be running ads for your clients and whatever local market they're in. And then lastly, we have the most important of all, which is psychographic details. These are values, attitudes, interests, beliefs, lifestyles, organizations, groups, affiliations, all of the, uh, all of the head stuff that goes into it. So what do they feel? What do they like? What do they enjoy? What are their pains, their problems, their fears, their miseries? What are their wants, their dreams, their goals, their desires? I typically break that down into two different buckets, one of which I call miseries. These are going to be their fears, pains, problems, frustrations, all the things they're trying to get away from. And then over here, I call miracles. These are their wants, their goals, their dreams, their desires, your business, your agency, you act as the middleman here to move them away from pain and towards the ideal end state that they want to get to. But of course, the only way to know what that is, is by doing a little bit of research, talking to them, making sure that you're getting all of this set up. And that is going to be probably one of the single biggest factors on the success of your ad is how well you know your ideal client, because all of your messaging and the words you say and the offer you put in front of them is going to make sure that it's relevant and it's relatable and it's irresistible so that they actually want to click on it. So that's market. After that, we have message. This is essentially what you say and how you say it. So we're going to package this up. I'll give you not only a script that I use as well as show you some of our top performing scripts uh, for the agency accelerator, but also give you a chat GPT prompt at the end there. That's going to make all of this really simple. But essentially what we're trying to do is communicate our value. We're trying to hook them and draw them in. But again, lots more to say on that one in a minute. Then we have media. 
This is not only where the ad is going to be placed. So obviously if we're running Facebook ads, Facebook, probably Instagram as well, depending on where your market is, lots of different placement options available. But the big questions there are what kind of images, what kind of videos, what are we going to run carousels? Is it going to be vertical or square or formatted or whatever it is? What's it going to look like? What is the tone we're trying to convey? Very important things, especially because Facebook is a largely visual platform, meaning if we want to stop someone from scrolling by at lightning speed, we need to show them something that catches their attention and actually gets them to stop. And then we have machine. The machine, my friend, is probably the most exciting part because it's here that we get to take what would ordinarily be just a plain old boring Facebook ad and turn it into money. And we do this using a very simple but incredibly effective funnel that I've used over the years called the case funnel. So let me pull that up for you now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sketchy handwriting down here, and then I'll make sure that we've got a nice, clean, easy to see graphic right above it, right above there. So it'll be a, a whole lot easier to follow along with. But essentially this case funnel is something that we've used over the last uh, 10 years, really. It's generated millions and millions of dollars, countless thousands of clients for our agencies, as well as our students and that. Uh, and the case stands for C being coaches, consultants, course creators, provided they're providing some kind of higher ticket service. A is for agencies, S service professionals, E experts. The takeaway point here is that it is designed to get clients. So this is not e-com, drop shipping, anything like that. This is an agency style funnel designed to get you clients. And of course, in the context of what we're doing here, it all starts with a Facebook ad. So that's step one. Now, what a lot of people do with their Facebook ads is they'll just run a Facebook ad directly to a sales page or to a calendar, perhaps, or to some kind of work with me page or hire us or heaven forbid, the homepage of the agency website, which is the absolute worst place to ever send traffic because people just get lost. They don't do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to be a little more strategic about it and we're going to send people through to a landing page. So we're going to say LP for landing page. Very very standard, basic marketing 101 stuff here. We send them to a landing page in order to collect name and email and ideally phone number as well, provided you are equipped to use it. So do not collect a phone number if no one's going to call the leads or send them an SMS or anything like that. But if you are going to, and I highly advise that you do, this is an absolutely fantastic way to make a better connection and convert significantly more people than just collecting emails where we have to worry about deliverability rates and all kinds of other things. But it's here in this next step that I do not have space to write. So that's where this, uh, this graphic up there is going to come in handy. We have the authority amplifier. I'll just write auth amp. And the goal of the authority amplifier is actually really simple. It is to establish you as the expert, as the leader. It's to provide some value. It's to put a little bit of salt in the wounds that they have. Uh, and to essentially pre-qualify them even more and pre-warm them up for everything that's going to come later. Now, there's a number of different ways to create an authority amplifier. You can do a webinar, you can do a VSL, which is a video sales letter, which is typically 10 to 15 minutes. You could have it just literally be a straight sales page with text, possibly some testimonials on there. My preference and the one that we use is pretty much always a VSL, so a 10 to 15 minute a video sales letter. And the reason we're doing this is because unlike with say organic traffic, or if we're going super broad top of funnel, where we need to sort of indoctrinate someone into our system and show them their problems and all of that, we're typically dealing with a more, not necessarily sophisticated buyer, but more aware buyer of the problem that they have, which is why they clicked on the ad. And again, we're going to talk about how to write this ad so that all of this becomes a lot easier, but this is why we want to be specific with our ad so that all of this makes sense. And again, if we come back here to alignment, that's where all of this starts to play together is that if we're giving a, the right offer, we've targeted our people, right? We have a good message, the right kind of media and imagery. We're sending them through this machine. Magic starts to happen. So authority amplifier, after we get them on the authority amplifier, and we start working them through that, then we've got a couple other steps that we can take them through. So they're interested, they're bought in. Now we can go application. And I'm going to have to sneak that in to get one more square application. We can do calendar. And then we're going to have 
This one here, which I don't have room for, but we're just going to make it fit by writing call. So what ends up happening? We guide them through Facebook ad to landing page, landing page to authority amplifier, authority amplifier to application. The application then leads to a calendar. You can swap these around. By the way, there is no real, all one always wins. There's some arguments sometimes over like, should we put the calendar first or the application first? My advice, start with the application first, because then you're able to pre-qualify people better and determine if they're the right fit to even get the calendar page, which you can use through all kinds of different logic with different softwares. Then once they're on the calendar, then you complete the call. Now we're going to circle back to this in just a second and let's put that there for the sake of uh, my scribbling. I'm probably just going to show you the metrics right above, but let me walk you through some of what these look like using a sort of general hypothetical case of what we could expect. But before I walk you through some sample general metrics in order to help you see if you're on the right track or not, first I've got to give you the, uh, the legally required earnings disclaimer, essentially saying that none of what I'm about to show you is true or accurate or even remotely possible. Not for me, not for anyone. In fact, you shouldn't listen to me at all. You shouldn't listen to anybody on the internet. And uh, you definitely should not try this because it is pretty much guaranteed to fail. So with that out of the way, well, let's dive into the metrics now for entertainment purposes only. All right, now, just for fun, I've decided to rewrite out the steps so they all fit here as well as I'll make sure that that, uh, there it is. That thing up there is put there so we can actually track and follow along here. But this is important because it sort of shows you what's possible uh, as well as what are the basic metrics that you want to look for. And when you start to crunch the numbers, things start to get very cool very quickly because you realize that if we can dial this funnel in, even sort of loosely, roughly matching these numbers, well, client acquisition becomes a pain of the past and you're able to start generating clients on autopilot while you sleep simply by scaling up your budget when you want more clients and dialing it back if you're overbooked and a little too busy and you can move on from there. Now, again, general generic metrics here, but let's just say that we're getting a $2 cost per click on our Facebook ads. So we've done some decent targeting. We've got a, a good offer and a good message and we're putting it out in front of whoever we're going after. So if your agency serves plumbers, we're targeting plumbers. If your agency serves roofers, we're targeting roofers. If you do med spas, we're targeting med spas, whatever the case. And we're able to get $2 cost per click because we're making a really good offer for them. Now let's assume that we're going to get from click into conversion here and the people that actually convert is going to be around 33%. So let's just say for easy math, uh, if we've got $2 clicks and we're going to do that there, that's going to be a $6 lead, right? Because now they've entered their name and their phone number and their email address. So now we've got $6 leads. Now, seeing as the landing page shows the authority amplifier, these kind of go together. So therefore we're getting $6 video views, $6 authority amplifier views for all of this. So basically nothing changes there, but let's, uh, let's carry this on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go from authority amplifier to application. And this is where we're going to notice a pretty significant drop because it's very easy for somebody to opt in here and just put in their name and email address into the, um, into the landing page, but to actually go out and fill out an application, we are going to be getting less people to do that. That's cool though. We can still factor all this in, but let's say that we've got a 10% conversion rate then from the actual video to where they're going to fill out an application, which gives us $60 applications. Not terrible, not terrible, but obviously not everybody that applies is, uh, is going to end up converting. Now, because we are going to put the application and the calendar page on the same thing there, we're going to assume just for easy math that people actually show up for their calls. So we'll say $60 calendar booking as well. And then this is where you get to work your magic by walking them through your sales process, showing them what you can do for them, alleviating their pains, introducing your services, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say that you're pretty new to sales and, uh, and it's still not super comfortable for you. And we are dealing with cold traffic. So we're going to say that we've got a 25% close rate on our sales, which means that you close one in four calls, which is, um, it's pretty, pretty low. We're going to want to get that number up later. We're going to want to work on our sales and our presentation and our offer, but like one in four, that's a pretty manageable, achievable number. I'd like to imagine, which means that we're now going to get a $240 cost per acquisition of a client. So what we've done here is we've put in two bucks at the beginning 
for a click, we've worked them through these numbers. Again, you can adjust these up or down or move them around. But what you can see is that at the end here, we're getting a cost per acquisition of $240. Now, if you're selling something for $240, this is not a good funnel for you. You will break even. If you're selling something for $100, you're going to lose money every time you run this funnel. But if you're running something and your agency is serving relatively standard packages of $1,500, $2,500, maybe $4,000, maybe even $5,000 a month, well, it starts to become kind of a no-brainer to want to spend time and energy really kind of mastering this and dialing it in. Because if we're able to put in $240 to acquire a $2,500 client, we're going to want to do this as much and as often as we possibly can. Because it's essentially a perpetual money-making, client-generating machine that works all of the time. So the next thing then is, if this is the funnel that we want to use, the next thing that we've got to talk about is how do we actually go out there and create a really high converting Facebook ad? So let me walk you through that now. So the beauty of marketing and copywriting and direct response and writing Facebook ads is that we're dealing with people, we're dealing with humans. And we, as humans, well, we really haven't changed that much mentally in the past tens of thousands of years, which means that when we're presented with certain information in a certain way, we tend to react and to respond very predictably, meaning that we almost know what someone's going to do just based on the scenario or the situation or the words that we use or the way that we present them. This is why copywriting works so well. This is why marketing works so well, is that, again, we like to think that we're these fully autonomous, conscious beings capable of, uh, of superior thought and seeing through everything. But even when we know some of these tactics are being used against us, they still work. Our brains are just wired so much in that way to seek pleasure and to avoid pain that if we present someone with that opportunity and we provide a compelling argument and back it up with social proof and all of these things we'll talk about in a second, they tend to just click and then sign up and then buy. And they do it enough times that this becomes an incredibly effective and profitable customer acquisition channel. So some of the psychological hacks or triggers that I want to bring to your attention are the mere exposure effect. This just essentially says that the more times that we see something, the more that we like it. We like things that we see a lot. We feel more comfortable with them. This sort of stems back to uh, our caveman days. If we saw something roaming around the cave and it didn't try to eat us enough, we, we assumed it was friendly. Same thing goes with our ads. This is why we want to be consistent with our copy, with our branding, with our messaging, with retargeting. We can uh, sort of introduce into the puzzle later, showing up again and again. There's a old rule called the rule of seven in marketing where we want to make at least seven touch points with someone in order to get them to take action. Well, this is what that's playing on is the mere exposure effect. The next one is the reciprocity effect. The reciprocity effect is essentially we're far more likely to want to return the favor if someone's done something nice for us in the first place. There's a great book by Robert Cialdini called Influence, talks about this as well as most other very important social triggers as well that you'll see pretty much everywhere around you. Uh, but this one's very common. This is the reason that uh, servers at restaurants will give out mints at the end of the meal or chocolates or something like that. It significantly boosts tips as well. In fact, they did studies where the servers gave a few extra chocolates or a few extra tips, or a few extra mints, and it increased the tips quite dramatically. So regardless, with our ads, we want to provide value. We don't just want to go out there and say, this is terrible. You're terrible. Everything is terrible. There's no hope. That can work sometimes, but you're better off by identifying a problem, by making them feel heard and understand and valued, by giving them something to alleviate some of their pain or to show them that you're going to be able to help them, either through your lead magnet or even through your ad copy itself. All right, next is serial position effect. We do this all the time when we're writing ads because what this essentially says is that the first and the last items are perceived as way more important than everything else in between. So this is why we'll start with a very strong hook and statement. That was a bad line. We'll start with a very strong hook and statement, and we'll end with a very strong call to action that gets them to actually go and do what we want them to do towards the end of the ad. Then I think those are pretty much the main ones that I want to cover. So with that said, let's dive into the actual script now of how to put all of this together and we're going to start out with the problem. Now, any good Facebook ad, Instagram ad, YouTube ad, direct mail, social media post, anything at all, pretty much always starts with a hook. 
some kind of attention-grabbing statement that, again, reaches through, grabs them, gets them to pay attention, gets them to stop the scroll and actually pay attention to what they have. Now, this hook can be a question. It can be a call-out, which is one of my favorites. Uh, it could be anything that essentially captures their attention. It could be a polarizing statement. I personally like either questions or call-outs or call-outs with questions. Let me explain what that looks like. Essentially, let's use the roofing niche as an example. You could say, hey, roofers, are you looking for more high-quality uh, permanent roofing leads? That's a bit of a mouthful. We'll workshop it. Uh, if you're doing solar marketing, you could say, solar businesses, do you want to discover the secret to uh, turning sunlight into sales? Do you want to discover how to generate more solar roofing contracts? Do you want to discover how to do this? Would you like more of this? Whatever it is. So we've done two different things. First of all, we've called out the market. And then we've called out the pain in the form of a question. The pain being lack of leads, lack of sales, lack of the services, etc. And then we're just phrasing it in a way like, do you want this thing? Would you like this? Would that be helpful? Would you find that useful or valuable or whatever it is? Play around with these. There is no one perfect call out that works every time. You're going to find different variations and combinations of it. We can use dynamic creative inside Facebook ads and they'll automatically do that for us. More on that in a minute. But for now, these are the big takeaways that we want. We want this call out that essentially reaches through and gets them to pay attention. Now, the other thing that this does and the reason that we want to focus on the market and calling them out roofers, contractors, plumbers, et cetera, et cetera, is that we pay attention to things that are relevant and that resonate with us. And there's nothing more like that than our names or the industry that we're in. So if I say, hey, marketing agency owner, would you like this thing? Hey, um, get more clients for your marketing agency. Here's a Facebook ad script that's going to help you sign up 5, 10, even 20 new clients this month just by using this thing, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to probably get your attention and I'm not going to get everybody else's, which is the key. We want to get the attention of the people we're trying to go after while at the same time excluding everybody else that isn't that. And this is where it's valuable to have a niche that has a title like dentist and chiropractor and med spa owner and agency owner and gym owner and things like that, rather than an ambiguous thing like, hey, person that works corporate and isn't happy there, but would like to start a business, but isn't sure what to do next. Those are hard people to target because you basically have to target everybody and then use better language in order to sort of draw them out and get them to pay attention. So why does this work? Something called the RAS, Reticular Activating System. Crazy little part in your brain that essentially gets you to pay attention to things that are important to you and block out everything else. Little bit of an example to show you exactly how this works. Take a quick look around your room or car or office or wherever you are right now and try to look for everything that is blue. Find everything that's blue. Everything you can think of that looks blue, feels blue, tastes blue. I don't know. Just look for blue stuff. Then come back here, close your eyes for a second, and I want you to visualize everything that's red. Try to pick out everything that's red. It's going to be tough. You can open your eyes again. If you did it, good for you. Bonus points. Uh, but it's really hard to do because your brain was cued in and looking for all the blue stuff. I didn't ask you anything about the red stuff. Well, the same thing happens when if you buy a new car and all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere, you get a new shirt, you see that shirt everywhere, you whatever else, a new hobby that you're into, you start hearing everybody talk about it. Your brain is super smart and dialed right into things like that. Well, the same thing goes with your customers and your prospects. When we use their titles, when we use their pains and problems, fears, frustrations, their miseries, their wants, dreams, goals, desires, their miracles, all the things that resonate with them, we cut right through the noise and we go directly to them so that they can't help but pay attention. They can choose to not take action, but they can't choose to ignore it. It's, it's in there before they even have a chance um, to get over it. So problem, step one. Next is what I call the empathy phase. If you're looking at this as the normal sort of copywriting framework of uh, PAS, problem, agitate, solve, this would often be called the agitation phase. I prefer looking at it like the empathy, empathy phase though, because I want to put myself in their shoes and show them that I'm in their shoes. Not in a creepy way, but like I get where they're coming from. I know what they've been through. I've been there before. Uh, we often use another framework called feel, felt, found. 
And this is where I know how you feel. I felt the same way. Then I found this and it changed everything. That's a very cheesy, cliched way of doing it. We obviously want to be a little more subtle than that. But essentially, the goal is empathy, showing them that we know what they're going through. We know it's hard and difficult, but we can help them, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm going to put up a section on this screen here. Now, I'm going to put up a ad copy over here. And also make sure I'll link this up in the descriptions below this video as well so that you can actually read it. But I want to show you some of the copy from one of our highest converting ads. Also, I'm going to make sure that you've got uh, not only this ad, but a few other of our absolute top performing ads for you to take a look at and learn from and model. Obviously, don't copy them directly. That's just that's just wrong. You can do better. I believe in you. But use them to get some ideas and some inspiration. Look for how it's structured. Also put some of the images that we've used there as well. So empathy phase. My fellow marketing agency owner, tell me if this sounds familiar. You're stuck at just two to three clients and can't seem to break past the $10,000 per month mark and stay there consistently. You have no consistent, repeatable, or scalable process to generate new clients and revenue on demand. Your offer is either too boring to stand out or too confusing to understand which means your clients have no reason to choose you over your competitors. You blame your niche and think swapping it out for another would solve all your problems. It won't. You're wasting time on useless distractions, like building a killer website rather than what actually matters, like getting clients. You're reacting to whatever marketing opportunity comes across your plate, most of which are just wrong for your business. You've been told you need to do everything and be everywhere, which makes it impossible to get started. You're overwhelmed with the tools and technology and letting that stop you. You can't kick the feeling of imposter syndrome and are unsure if you're skilled enough, which causes you to stop taking action. You're spread too thin and creating content on channels that none of your clients are even using. Simply fixing this one issue alone can save you hours each week and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And you've got this paralyzing fear of what should I do next? Where do I even start? Well, the psychological phenomenon that's happening there, if you read through those and if you, uh, or if you listen to them and you're like, yeah, I resonate with some, maybe most, possibly even all of those. Well, we're using something called the framing effect and we're doing it ethically and we're doing it honestly. I'm not making any of that up. In fact, I know all of those things because that was all me years ago before I figured out this whole how to build a successful six, seven figure agency thing. I went through all of those pains. So I'm a sim simply conveying that, telling that story, framing it all. And then the other thing it does is it lays into something called confirmation bias. So again, first thing is called the framing effect. This is, oh, that's some quality writing there. Essentially, we're showing them that there's stuff to be gained and there's stuff to lose by staying where they're at. And then there's confirmation bias, which is where another way of putting this is that I only ever preach to the choir. So I only talk to the, the agency, the people that believe in marketing, rather than trying to convince someone that it's, um, it's important if, if they're not going to buy in. Those are the kind of people that you want for clients. You don't want clients that don't believe in marketing, don't think it's possible, and you're going to have to convince them. Rather, you're better off playing into the things that they already believe. I believe it's important. I just don't know how to do it. It's confusing, but I want to do it, but I'm a little bit scared, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we want to do here. And all of that leads us to the third part of the ad, which we could call the solution, but we're going to call it the offer. And the reason is, is because the offer is the solution. So we've brought up a problem by presenting it in the form of a hook, called out the target market. We've used our qualifiers there. We've talked about the pains they have. We've empathized with them, showing them, look, I know what you're going through. It's not very fun, kind of sucks, da da da. Now, we don't want to just leave them hanging, which is why we give them an offer and an attempt to solve this for them. Fortunately, the solution is your service your agency, whatever it is that you do. And the secret is you want to align your offer with their pains, their problems, and their language. In other words, if you're doing marketing for a dentist uh, and they say, we want 50 new patients, your offer should be 50 new patients. It shouldn't be lead gen, shouldn't be websites, shouldn't be social media marketing, shouldn't be any of that. It should be 50 new patients. If you're doing marketing for a, um, I don't know, let's say a, a bakery, probably don't do it for a bakery. They don't have a lot of money to spend on it. And they want to sell, I don't know, sell 20 loaves of bread a day. Well, guess what your offer should be? We'll help you sell 
20 loaves of bread a day, every day, five days a week, seven days a week, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, seriously, don't do bakery marketing. Go, go for the higher ticket things where they, they've, uh, they got the value of the value of marketing. But regardless, this is what we need to do with our offer. We need to present it there and then we lead to our CTA, our call to action. This is where we say, hey, look, if you want to learn how to sell more bread, if you want to learn how to generate uh, 50 new patients for your dental practice, if you want to learn how to close 100 to 200 new appointments every single week, if you want to sell 50 to 60 more cars per week, et cetera, et cetera, then click here to learn more. Then click this link to download the case study. Then click here to apply now. Then click here to do whatever. And of course, that takes us all the way back, scrolling way back through our notes to here, right? This is where we're guiding people back through. Our call to action in our ad leads them to the landing page. And we've essentially come full circle. So we take all of that, we move them down, and we move them through to the next step of the process. Now, if all of this sounds completely overwhelming and ridiculously confusing, and you've never done this before, don't worry. This is exactly why I've got a chat GPT prompt and template that I'm going to link up for completely free down in the descriptions below this video. All you really have to do here is just copy and paste and put a few things in, and it's going to spit out a very usable ad that's going to get you 80 to 90% of the way there. Now, the next thing that I need to show you is how are we actually going to set up and design this campaign inside of the Facebook Ads Manager. But before we get to that, I've got to answer a very important question, which is images, media. Should I do picture? Should I do video? Should I do carousel? What's going to work best here? And to answer that, it's a tricky one because the fact is that a good video will beat a good image, but a good image will beat a bad video. So unless you really know what you're doing when it comes to creating effective video ads, an image is the significantly safer and easier place to start because it's just removing one more variable from your overall ad testing equation. So you're going to be able to put out a Facebook ad, use a couple very simple, basic, high converting, scroll stopping images. I'll give you some examples in just a second. And then from there, you're going to be able to figure out, all right, are my metrics on point? Am I generating clients at the desired acquisition? Uh, now it's time to get a little more fun, a little more creative. Now we can start adding possibly carousels. Now we can start looking into adding different kinds of video. Maybe it's vertical. Maybe it's square. Maybe it's the classic videos with the little text on top. Maybe we've got captions. Maybe they're different kinds of captions. All of that stuff. So with that said, let me show you a couple places I go to get images. And then we're going to hop into ads manager. All right, so one of the very first places that I go is pretty much always Unsplash. Now, Unsplash does have paid programs now, so you can upgrade, but for the most part, you really don't need to. Uh, the key here is to find images that are relevant and interesting to the market that you're trying to serve. So let's see here. Let's do something that I've not done before. Let's actually do pest control. That might be interesting. I bet we could find some funny images we don't want to gross people out, but again, if we're looking at like a pest control service, our marketing agency focuses on helping pest control businesses, help more people, et cetera, et cetera. Most of these are going to work okay. Let's find like ants. Actually, I'd probably just go straight for ants. Anything like ants. Those aren't bad. That one would be good. Like if you're a pest control agency and you saw that, I'd probably put a bit of text on it. That's also going to pop against the background. The other thing I might do is I'm going to grow some people out here, but cockroaches, we'll see what they have. That's definitely going to stop someone in their tracks, pest control wise. So those all work. If we're doing, say, landscaping, I would look up. Landscaping's tricky because you don't want to just find like nice yards, but let's, let's type in nice yards. Let's, okay, hang on backyard. And we'll see what we can find. All right. So like we could do something like that. If you're going to go with like a really sort of generic, almost flat, boring kind of image, you will want to add some kind of text to it. There used to be all kinds of rules about not adding text. Uh, it would just diminish your reach and that most of that has gone away or certainly not as, um, as damaging as it once was. This one's kind of cool. I like the simplicity of it. I'd probably download it and then I would boost up the contrast and the brightness a little bit as well, which you can do through any free photo editing site or through Photoshop. So those are okay. But what I'm looking for, 
things, this one's a paid one, but you, again, you can see the contrast. So it's like clearly stark between the green and the white there. Let's see if we can find one more. Let's do, again, if I had a tree service, typing around my mic, there we go. Tree service. Actually, hang on. Big tree. I'm thinking of the thinking of the niche as I'm typing it in. There we go. Big tree. So it's like, I probably wouldn't pick something like this. I'd want to find where are most of my clients coming from and then what are the kind of trees that they have there. And then also, can I maybe find a tree that is like on a house or wrecking something? Although honestly, any of these are, these all kind of pop. That, that pops really good. Good contrast. This one pops, but is super generic, very photo, stock photo like. Uh, keep in mind the seasons as well. Like if you're operating in snowy climates, you don't want to show a summery tree uh, and vice versa. Those are good. Let me go tree house or tree damage. Oh, tree house. It's going to literally show a tree house. Hang on. Tree damage. All right. So we might, there we go. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. There we go. Stop that from happening. There's my tree service image. Definitely, definitely testing that one. The other website that I like to go to is a place called Gratisography. And this one often has some very, like they say, truly unique, usually whimsy, always free, very weird images. Um, I love them and a lot of them work really well. So you've got to check. And again, I would test like a, an image like this, say, and then I'd come over here and I wonder if we'll have anything like tree related and see if I could find anything kind of funny or weird. Not particularly in that case. I wonder if I can go animals for pest control. Definitely find something for animals. These are all good. I've actually used this surfing dog before. Great ad. So those are good. Not too much pest stuff, but again, interesting, weird. I don't think we have a niche for this one, but I could think of some uses. I almost want to write an ad based on that image, but that's essentially it. It's like, we can look for all of those. And then of course we can just go straight up text like this. So this is one of our top performing images, which is not clever or cute or creative or anything like that. It's literally just this, some words on a, on a background and other words on a different color background and other words on a different background. Again, we're clear, we're concise, we're relevant, and we resonate with the people that we're trying to go for rather than trying to be too cute and too clever and too creative. So typically what I'll do is when I launch a new ad set, I will launch the best copy that I can think of, the best words, how I structure all that together. Then what I'll do is I'll test three different images against that. So I'll probably test something like this something like uh, a very literal image like that, and then possibly something a little bit weird and a little bit out there in order to see if um, which one's going to get me the highest click-through rate, the lowest cost per lead, the best cost per acquisition. So those are our images. Now let's make an ad. All right, so here we are inside of a sample account that I've got for Facebook ads. I'm gonna essentially walk you through the process of creating an ad from start to finish and literally all we're going to do is follow the steps that Facebook gives us. They've made it so much easier over the past little bit to set up ads now. Uh, back back in the day, like a decade ago when we had to run these things, it was done through spreadsheets and power editors and all kinds of nonsense. But now, nice and simple. So the first thing we've got to do is decide which one do we want. Awareness, traffic, engagement, leads, app promotion, sales. My strong recommendation is we basically always run leads, or sales. And the reason is, is because we want to do direct response marketing here. We don't want to run ads for brand awareness, for, uh, for reach, for exposure, for video views, unless we have an amazing retargeting system in place. It never makes sense. Basically, we're always going to get a cheaper cost per acquisition of a client when we go direct for what we want. And we're just upfront and tell Facebook, this is exactly what I want. Please go get this for me. In fact, I'll pull up a chart as well here on the screen that will show you. Uh, it's from a book called um, by Robert Bly on how to create irresistible offers. And essentially, they measured the cost of acquisition depending on if it's more brand focused or more direct offer focused. Clearly, 
much cheaper to go direct offer focus. So in this case, we're going to go leads. You can see it's going to give us some examples like instant forms, messenger and Instagram conversions and calls. Now, this is where things get a little interesting is on the next page. So we'll hit go. It's going to ask us, we can either streamline it using best uh, practices, what they believe, or we can go manual leads creation. Honestly, I don't really have a preference here. In fact, by the time that this video gets published, they change this all the time. So this is really not that big a deal. We can stick with recommended settings and I'll show you the things that I like to change. Up until around a couple of years ago, we used to change everything. And now we leave most of it like Facebook recommends with more open targeting, more automatic placements, more of whatever it is that they want us to do. So campaign name, we can just call this... Um, YouTube ads sample, and we're going for leads. We don't have a special category. If it's credit, employment, housing, anything like that, you're running ads for it, then obviously you need to market. Do not try to game the system. They will find you. Just shut your ad account down. I don't like using the A-B test option because I like having more control over which uh, which I'm testing. And essentially these, they they send them out pretty, uh, pretty evenly. And uh, I'd like to have a little more control of when I scale things up and down. Advantage bu campaign budget, I normally leave off. We set it at the ad set level. But again, we've tested them all. Sometimes the others work. Sometimes they don't. It's a bit crazy. A bit crazy. Okay. So now we're here in the ad sets. And we can give this a name. I'll name the ad set based on the targeting that I'm using as well as the conversion location. Now, there's two ways that I'm going to recommend that you run conversion campaigns. The first of which is through instant forms. This is normally what you're going to be using for your clients. So if you're running, if your marketing agency is running Facebook ads for clients and you're trying to generate them leads, the easiest way by far is to use an instant form. The reason is, is because it does most of the heavy lifting for you. We're able to do retargeting inside of a meta without leaving that. So we don't have to worry about losing pixel data. It's simpler. The tracking works better. I mean, the list kind of goes on. For you as an agency owner, we're after kind of a different person here. So I normally go both. I'll run website conversion ads through the website, setting up a conversion pixel on the page that is essentially the confirmation page. So if they opt in for this on the thank you page, that's where I'll pixel them. But I'll also run instant form ads as well. What I'll typically do, do though is I'll build out the website conversion one first, get all my pixels set up because this one's harder quote unquote, harder to do, takes a little more time. Then I'll build out the instant forms after. So let's do that for now. We're going to go maximize number of conversions. We'll just use whatever pixel we have here. We'll select a conversion event. Let's see if we have any, we don't have any custom ones built yet. So we'll just go lead. Uh, we can set up the conversion. The, again, this has gotten significantly easier. We can just walk through their editor. We'll make sure that the pixel is installed on the right page and then uh, show the URL for it, set up the parameters around that, and we've got our, our conversion set up. Cost per result, I leave this open. Tend not to get too involved with any custom budgeting, custom uh, options like that. They can come into play later as we scale things up, but like we're talking way, way later. Attribution settings is all fine. That's all good. They're going to continue to change what they call attribution if it's seven-day view, one-day click. This just has to do with where they credit, which ad gets um, gets confirmation for the conversion. So again, we're going to leave this mostly open. Budget-wise, this is where we got to spend just a second talking about it because the budget that I like to set is typically any anything that's going to get me three to five conversions per ad set per day. Let me say that again. Three to five conversions per ad set per day. So if I think that I'm going to get $5 leads, what I'll do is I'll set a budget of 25 bucks a day. And the reason that I do that is this way I'm making sure that I'm providing Facebook with sufficient data so that they can actually optimize the ad. Because if we put in like two bucks and we get no conversions, Facebook's just going to start showing it to everybody. Nobody's going to take any action at all. And Facebook's not going to know who should we show this to? Nobody seems to like it. I guess we'll show it to nobody. And then let's set it for February 1st. There we go. I normally leave it open, not an end date, just so I have control. Just don't forget about it. Locations, again, target where you are. The country that you're going after. Advantaged audience. This is where, again, there's, there's a few different uh, schools of thought depending on how good your ad writing skills are. If they're really, really dialed in, 
you can often leave a lot of this very open and not have much targeting at all and just let Facebook figure it out. If your ad skills are perhaps lacking a little bit and we haven't really dialed in the avatar, the ideal clients that we're going after or anything like that, it does pay to still do a little bit of targeting. This might change. Um, over the years, I've gotten less and less targeted and let my ad copy do more of the heavy lifting for me. But regardless, you can enter a custom audience if you have one. This is going to be based off previous customers, can be lookalike audiences off your um, Facebook page, off your Instagram page, things like that. Or we can actually do detailed targeting down here. Now, age. Put in whatever is the youngest age that you've ever served a business owner and the oldest age that you've ever served. We're going to want to leave this one pretty broad. But if you know, for example, no one under 22 has ever um, owns, a, I don't know, a pest control company and no one over the age of, we'll say 60 is interested in this or has ever hired you, we can kind of narrow it down there. Genders, I normally leave open. Uh, both men and women, unless I know specifically I'm targeting like a um, uh, fitness coaching for women program, then clearly I'm going to target women with that. Now, this is where we can start to get a little bit interesting because we've got a ton of different options here on the targeting side, but I want you to keep an eye on this number as well up here, estimated audience size. Just to keep it kind of like ballparked, we want it at least a good few million. So here, what I might do is, a let's see, pest control. So now what we can do is we can find pest control of, uh, there we go, employers, job titles, employers, employees, et cetera, et cetera. Now you can see the size is here as they pop up, like 2,500, really, really small. Uh, 15,000, really small. 2,000, really small. Orkin, really small. Like all of that is going to be too small. So what we have a couple different options. Number one is we let our ad copy do more of the heavy lifting for us, being like attention, pest control, uh, business owners, et cetera, et cetera. And then Facebook will try to find it. Or we can try to look for other keywords or other things that would be interesting to them that we would be able to um, to target. So like what else are pest control business owners into? What else would they follow? What other organizations are there? Is there an affiliation, um, an association that they could be a part of, et cetera? Things like dentists, simple. Hang on, dentist. Uh, so we could find like schools they went to. We can find dentistry. We can type in uh, training. Hang on, we're scrolling all over here. Come back. Uh, obviously, we don't want equine dentistry. 12 million. There's a niche I never thought of going into. Horse dentistry. So anyway, all kinds of things like that. Or again, we leave it open and we let our ad copy do it for us. Placements, we're typically leaving these all placements. Okay, next. Let's move into the actual ad copy itself. Pixel not active, because it's a sample account, so we're just gonna let that go. We're gonna scroll up here, and you can see that we now have a ton of different options for things to fill in. So let's just copy and paste some stuff over, and of course, what I'm also going to do is uh, put a link down in the descriptions below that's going to show you three of our highest converting Facebook ads uh, for you to take a look at and model after so we don't have to retype them all here. All right, so first things first, we can just write an ad name. Typically, I'll name this after I've written the ad because that way I know kind of what it's about, what the style is, et cetera, et cetera. Ad creative, we need to add media is the first thing. So let's pick an image. Let's go with this random fishing rod here, just for the sake of demonstration purposes. Now, you can see that it's going to give you a couple different size options here. Obviously, this image does not work well for a vertical style alignment. You have two different options, one of which is you can just replace it with a different kind of image. The other of which is if we did have more real estate to play with in the photo, we could crop it and adjust it and move it over. For the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to roll with it. It's going to ask if we want to do all of these optimizations. We say, sure. I mean, they normally don't have a significant impact on it. It's color, brightness, maybe some cropping, et cetera, et cetera. So just like that, you can see already we've got all of these things built up and it's going to start to put the image in different placements and formats and so on and so forth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write our actual ad. Now this is where we want to do the heavy lifting prior to getting into the Facebook ads manager. So we want to make sure that we've written out the ad copy. We've done our 
thinking through what our offer is, what our market is, what their pains and problems, fears, frustrations, all of that stuff. So essentially, this is where we would have like hook and call out to get their attention. We're going to come back to this generating text variations in a second. This is where we would have, again, think of the headline much like the headline for anything else you would ever do, a YouTube video, a, a blog post, any other kind of social media content. So it's like interesting, attention, capturing headline. The beauty here is that we're also going to be able to see how this looks. So it'll show us in different formats, like is it going to fit? Is it going to get cropped off, etc. The description is the stuff that appears way at the bottom. This stuff actually doesn't really matter that much. We've done all kinds of different split tests with it, spent millions testing different options, and um, it almost doesn't matter what we put there. So we'll just put some stuff about like, get new clients with this simple and proven system. And then normally what I'll do is some kind of ellipsis, which shows that it kind of gets cut off. So these three little dots, and then uh, it's a little bit intriguing in the off chance that it does show and someone actually does read it. Call to action buttons, you have tons. We normally use learn more. Most people usually use learn more. This might change. Keep an eye. This is why I like to look at other Facebook ads as well to see what other people are using and what they're, um, what they're switching through. If you do have something that's really relevant, like perhaps download or book now, um, pretty much nothing else. So yeah, learn more is good. This is where we put in the website of where we want it to go. So join. And that's also going to pull up, uh, populate the link down there. We can also put in a display link if we want it to show something different. Provided we match. Perfect. Uh, browser add-ons typically use none. Again, we could use instant forms, but then I'm going to go back and set this thing up with an instant form instead of with a conversion. Language is off, etc. Tracking is all set up through, in this case, the completely dead pixel and on. Now, Now's where we get to do something called dynamic creative. So when we first went through this, we had that option to do split testing. I recommend avoiding that. And instead what we do is we come here for different text variations. So right now, this is our main text. Obviously, it's very short. Like I said, check out the ads below. We'll give you some more examples. Uh, but what we want to do here is we want to do come up with a couple different options for it. So we can add a text variation. Um, and if we have a couple backed up, that's what I would recommend. So like write the best ad you can, then write another, then write another and adjust them, tweak them, move them around. And then Facebook's going to allow you to sort of show them in different combinations to see what the winning combination is. Uh, also, they do have this where they're trying to essentially use AI to write the ad for you. As you can see, I mean, I didn't give them much to work with, but like... That's not terrible based on the hook and call out to get their attention. Ready to catch their eye, hook, call out. So let's let's give them something, a little more something to look uh, work with. Get 10 plus new agency clients. We'll say high value. We don't just want any. High value agency clients guaranteed. Perfect. Now we can see all kinds of different variations. So book your strategy sessions, start growing, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just looking through all of the other information that we've given it in order to help find uh, good combinations. And then of course we can just like hit plus and plus and start adding them. Now, be cautious here. Do not just add random text variations because the AI suggested it. In most cases, they're not very good. And the last thing you want to do is water down a really good message with a bunch of kind of like subpar ones. That said, also don't be afraid to test. So there's a bit of a middle ground here. My recommendation, let's try to get three different primary text variations as well as three different headline variations for you to uh, roll out with Facebook. Same thing goes with other kinds of images. We can also take a look here. Perfect. All right, so the only other thing that we really need to talk about now is what do we do once we have that ad built and we want to add other images to it. Well, the best thing is we'll go to our campaign. Under our campaign, we'll have our ad sets. And under our ad sets, we'll have our ads. 
So the way that I recommend you set this up, especially if you're working with budgets of 25, 50, up to $100 a day, not going much more than that, is we'll have one campaign that's primarily set up for our, our main conversion objective using website conversions or instant forms. Then we'll run them through ad sets, and the ad sets are where we're going to do the bulk of our targeting. So in this case, we have open targeting. So we would just rephrase this to open targeting. And I think we're also targeting men and women. And the ages, if I remember right, was like 22 to 60. So that's that targeting. Now what I can do is if I want to test something else, like people interested in dentistry or that went to dentist schools or that have an affiliation with a pest control thing or that went through some kind of landscaping thing, whatever it is, I can do that by simply duplicating this out and doing separate targeting in here. So you'll see that it says copy right beside. All we have to do is go edit and we can come in here. We can change our targeting down here to put in whatever else that we want. If we were doing fitness, we could say health and fitness and interest. There we go. So now we have a fitness targeting ad. Then from there, under each ad set, and I'd set the budget at, we'll say $25 a day is a nice safe place to start. If you're running uh, two different ad sets, 25 bucks a day is still good. You could go up to 50, go up to hundred. We've had these up to thousands, but again, your mileage may vary. Start slow. From there, under this is where we're going to have different ads because now what we can do is we can take the best copy that we've written for all of the ads, we can duplicate those out, and we can start swapping in different kinds of media. So this way, we're sort of using dynamic creative and a bit of a split test by running them through different ads in order to help find the cheapest cost per lead, the lowest cost per acquisition, all of those things. Now, I appreciate when I walk through a system like this, if you've never done this before, it can seem a little bit overwhelming, which is why my recommendation, again, let's have one campaign with like one ad set, one really good ad, make sure your funnel works, make sure everything's tracking okay. And from there, then we can scale it up and introduce other levels of complexity into the system. So now you know how to create a Facebook ad campaign for your agency in order to generate a basically unlimited supply of clients for your agency on autopilot while you sleep. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is check out a video I've got linked up right here, which is gonna give you some more agency growth secrets. And if you're interested in learning how we help agency owners grow and scale to six and seven figures, I'll make sure to put a link down in the descriptions below for you to check out if that's something you wanna learn more about.